All right. In this video, I want to talk about what it's like to have a heart of stone. I want to talk about my old life, the old me, because it's generally how the unbelieving world sees things, thinks about things, and feels about things. And that is, screw God. Why would I want to spend my life, especially eternity, praising him and kissing his ass, and all this time, deep down, what I really want to do is sex, drugs, and rock and roll. All I want to do is have fun. And God just wants to take that away and make me some kind of prune and a slave. No, I don't want any part of that. So even if he's real, I'm good. That is because I had a heart of stone. And that's how the world is because it has a heart of stone. But what I slowly realized and what the world needs to realize is that the things that I wanted that God was telling me no shouldn't be doing those things. You shouldn't have those things. Was actually detrimental to me, my family and friends. It was not good for my mental health, my emotional health, my physical health. It wasn't good for my relationships with my family and my friends, uh, with jobs. It wasn't healthy at all. It was self-destructive. But I wanted to do them because I took pleasure in them. And I didn't care that they were self-destructive. And generally, that's how the world is. We go after these things because we take pleasure in them, even though they're self-destructive. And even after we realize that they're self-destructive, we continue to do them. Like there's more things that are socially acceptable that we just keep uh, doing because of that, right? Now, if the world was, uh, wasn't was socially accepting it, it'd be a little bit different, but not too much different. But you see that uh, growing up, smoking wasn't a big deal where I grew up. So a lot of people were smokers of cigarettes. And that was self-destructive. And at times, it, it would hinder relationships with people who didn't want to be around somebody who was smoking, right? But they took pleasure in it, so they continued to do it. And they didn't want to deal with people who were tell them not to smoke or that they shouldn't smoke, right? But all in all, it ends up destroying their life, their physical life, that is. And a lot of people like going out drinking, having a good time all the time, right? This is self-destructive. It's not good for you. Yet, you don't want someone telling you that. But it is. Going out, and even if you're not doing that, doing uh, drugs, but just going out and partying, and uh, people like to fool around, let's say, mess around, you know? And uh, that's not good for your, your health either. You going around with different men, different women, or both men and women is not good for your emotional health. It really hardens the heart and it causes a lot of emotional damage and actually ruins your ability to actually bond with others. But you don't want people telling you the, these truths because you enjoy doing these things. You take pleasure in them. And even after you realize that they're actually self-destructive and ruin things with other people, 
you still don't want to let them go and you still make up excuses to stick with them. And then there'll be a time where you try to fight it. Fight smoking, fight drinking, fight going out, fight sleeping around. And you realize you can't. Like with a lot of people that are hooked on pornography. They realize that this is disgusting. This is promoting uh, the mistreatment of men and women, but especially women out there in these uh, adult sex films. You're realizing what it, you're doing to yourself, and you're disgusted with yourself, and you'll tell yourself this is the last time, and no more, and then the urge comes up and takes control again, because it's, it's addictive. It becomes a drug. And they're hooked onto it. I like what some people are showing is that a lot of people don't get why the cheese is free. Like the rat, the mouse, doesn't get why the cheese is free. Until it's, boom, it's dead, right? And this pornography is free. Like, why is it free? It's because it ruins you. It's to break you down. It lowers testosterone. It lowers... Uh, your ability to actually have intimacy and normal relationships with uh, women and does the same thing for women with men. Uh, it does all kinds of messed up things with your, uh, your social life where it and heightens anxiety and things like that. There's a lot of negative effects for being uh, addicted to pornography and uh, just masturbation in, in general. But, uh, even when people realize it's self-destructive and they want to stop, they can't, right? It's showing our heart's desire is not right. We can see this with certain people that are like over the top, right? Where they're, uh, let's say, an alcoholic. They're like, oh, that's where it's bad. Oh, this person's a chain smoker. That's where it's really bad. Oh, this person is doing harder drugs, that's where it is. This person is hooked on heroin. You know, that, that's the real bad thing going on there. And you could see that even the people who are on these drugs, they, they'll realize, hey, I want to stop, but they can't. And they take pleasure in these things that they don't want to even do anymore. There's even this drug I've heard about, like uh, something like crocodile or something like that over in the east, Russia area, where it's this drug that they inject themselves with, and they take this pleasure from it, I guess, but it ends up eating away the body, and it looks kind of like, I guess, scales or something on the body as it's eaten away, and that's why they call it crocodile or something like that, and it's highly addictive where you even watching your body fall apart, yet you still take it, and that shows the rottenness of our heart. The rottenness of my heart. Where this is how I was looking at God. Like, screw you. You you just want to keep me from having fun and enjoying myself. And you want me to be a slave. When no, you are a slave to your pleasures. Even when they are destroying yourself and your relationships with others. That's what you're a slave to. And God actually wants to set you free. It's that your heart is stone, it's hardened, it's stubborn. Right? And on top of this, it brings a spiritual blindness. Yeah, of course we can see. And we think we can see clearly that God and Christianity, it's all just a cult and it's all bullshit. We can see through all their hypocrisy. And it's like actually. No, what we're, we're doing is we're judging God by the people who claim to follow God. So we're, we're just following the excuses that we want to follow so that we continue following our stony heart and our desires that are not helping us at all, that are actually hindering us and enslaving us. And we need to 
admit this. And you need to take that stony heart, like we see here in this picture, and offer it to God. We all need to eat the humble pie, eat some crow here, and realize my nature is to fight against God. And in a very unreasonable, illogical way, where I would rather suffer horribly and die than to submit to God. And we need to just take this heart and offer it up to God. Admit it that we're sinners and we take pleasure in sin. And we can't stop. We're a slave to it. And lay it on him. God, I can't do it. I've been trying for years. Trying every different little thing to distract myself, to build discipline and self-control, and I still lose. I myself tried all these different things. I tried going to the military to build up my self-discipline and self-control. tried going to Eastern meditation practices to, again, self-control. Kept failing. You know what actually worked for me? Eating humble pie and realizing I'm I'm actually condemned. My own heart, my nature has condemned me where I can't save myself. I have no power here. Any power that I have is momentarily. And as soon as this desire comes up, whatever it may be, to smoke a cigarette, to drink, pornography, partying, whatever it is that gets you, and you know you want to stop because of its harmful effects, once that desire comes up, you know you're going to lose even when you don't want to do it. The desire comes up and it eventually changes you and convinces you into thinking, let's do it again, last time. It'll be fun. We'll get the urge out and then we won't do it anymore. Or, hey, I've gone a long time without doing it. Maybe if I keep doing this, I can stretch it out longer and longer and eventually I'll cut it out. But you never do. You just need to come to God with this and be like, save me from myself. As you see, I just wanted to bring up a couple of scriptures here. Ezekiel 36 at verse 26, it says, A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I'll give you a heart of flesh. And I'll put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. And you shall keep my judgments and do them. So we see just a quick little snippet here of when you come to God with your stony heart. He's going to take it and put an end to it. That's what he did on the cross. And then your belief in that is it is allows you to be reborn. And he gives you a new heart. And this is a process now that's going to take place where you'll notice the stony heart crumbles as the heart of flesh strengthens. That the old you is 
decaying and growing old and dying as the new you is growing and becoming stronger. And now it's not a fight to overcome these things. You're not even trying not to do these things. God has changed you where you just stop doing them. Your desire for them has faded away. And all you can do is praise God. And then your eyes are opened, like we see here. Where Jesus opens the eyes of a blind man, and the blind man asks him, you know, who's the Lord that I might believe on him? And he says, I am he. And he believed on him and worshipped him. And the Pharisees, who are the religious leaders that a lot of you condemn, and Jesus condemned them as well. You know, they're hypocrites. And they're the big reason why a lot of people turn away from Christianity. Because they're the ones supposed to be representing God. Jesus, and they're not doing it. And Jesus says unto them here, If you were blind, you should have no sin. But now you say we see, therefore your sin remains. So he's telling these religious leaders that you claim to see clearly. You know, you're, you're a teacher and a leader of the blind. Your sin remains on you. So God condemns them the same way you do. But with this new birth, he, he opens your eyes. And you're able to see clearly now. You're able to see God. And it changes the way you you saw things. Like I, I read in uh, Revelation about these angels with many wings flying over God. And all they did day and night was saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. And I was, in my mind, because I had a heart of stone, I was like, that seems like slavery. Like, that's all they're doing? Like, he created them, and all they do all the time is say, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. It's like, that is ridiculous. Why would anybody want to do that with their life? But now that my eyes are open, and I see God, I am just amazed at his beauty. And that's all I want to do, is sing, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Because I've been reborn, been changed, and my eyes are open, I can see. Things are different. So, I just wanted to make this video as a bit of a testimony and trying to reach out to people who, you know, you got the stony heart. And that's how you see things, right? I know that's how I did. And I wouldn't think ever that I would be in the, the shoes I'm in now, seeing things the way I'm seeing them and thinking about things the way I'm thinking about them now. The way we were, the way some of us are with this heart of stone, we don't fit in with heaven and we don't want to be there. You know, God's not going to take us. We have to be changed to fit in with heaven. Like, see, with this heart of stone, while we're in this flesh, we're actually basically children of Satan, of the devil here. And that's why we have these natural desires to spit in God's face and to follow pleasure, even though it's self-destructive. We're just following after the nature that comes from, uh, I don't want to say that, but our, our fleshly father there, the, the devil there. And that's why we have to be born again to be born into God's family. And when we do that, it, it changes us. And I just encourage you to 
to give your heart over to Jesus, to realize that he died for you in place of you to get rid of this stony heart so that you can give it to him and he could take the punishment that it deserves and condemn it and put it to death without you having to die. And he lived a perfect life so that he can then give you credit for that. I'm going to have a little clip that comes up that I splice into my videos that talks about the gospel. And I, I hope you check it out. But if you're still going to be hard-hearted about it, I would just like to say that there's going to be a time where Christians are raptured. They're probably going to say aliens did it. Something weird like that. The world's going to change and you're going to see weird things like that. So-called aliens and what have you. But it's not true. And they're going to issue out this mark. It's really going to change you. It's, they're probably going to promise debt forgiveness eternal life, eternal youth, freedom from illness and disease, maybe even superhuman abilities. And obviously, you'll be able to buy and sell and fit in with society. But this will leave you irredeemable. The stony heart you have, right now you could take it out and give it to Jesus. But if you take that mark, it's as if that stony heart is encased there now, and you're stuck with it. You can no longer give it over to Jesus and be reborn. You've fully chosen to embrace it inside with Satan. And because of that, You'll be irredeemable. It's going to change you in that way. That's why Jesus says those who seek to save their life, such as taking the mark, will lose it. And those who will lose their life for his sake will save it onto eternal life. So, I just want to put that notice in there. Thanks for watching and take care. All right, the good news. But before the good news, there's actually some bad news. The bad news is that one day you're going to die and you're going to be judged for all those things that you regret. You know, those things you regret doing and you regret saying. And even those things you regret just dwelling on in your thoughts. Those things that still haunt you today and you wish you could take back and change and make up for, but you can't. Well, you're going to be judged for those things. And obviously condemned because you're guilty. But the good news is, is that God loves you and he wants you to be with him for eternity. So he made a way for you to get off from everything you've done wrong by taking the punishment you deserve upon himself, by taking your life. If you accept what he's done for you by faith, he considers your life dead. This life you're living in the flesh right now, the past, present, and future, he wipes it out. And by faith, he gives you his life, which is perfect and unstained, and there's nothing you could do to ruin his perfect life. So that you're covered by his perfection. That's the good news, is that God loves you. And he made a way for you to come home no matter what, no matter what you think, say, or have ever done. He's made a way for you to come home. That's the good news. And if that's not enough for me telling you it, let's just look at a few scriptures here. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 at verse 1, it says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you which also 
ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which ye are also saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. This is the good news. It's what you're saved by, unless you believe in vain. Jesus died for you. And not only that, he rose again, showing that he's sinless. So not only can he pay for your sins, but he can give you his life. Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9, it says, For by grace, grace is undeserved and unearned, are ye saved through your faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. God has given you this gift of grace to be saved. All you got to do is believe him and trust him. That's all you got to do. He wants you to humble yourself as a child and just trust in him as your father. Just think of a five-year-old kid. What are they going to do to save themselves out in the world? They need to trust in their parents. You need to humble yourself as that child to realize you need your parents. You need God. And to trust Him that He loves you in spite of the mistakes you have made. Even the intentional mistakes that you enjoyed making. John 3, everybody knows verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed on, in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And he says this again in chapter 5, at verse 24, he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my words and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is path from death unto life. Because we're in this body of death that's just waiting to die, and we are going to be condemned. But God loves us, and he made a way to erase all everything wrong that we've ever done and everything wrong that's ever gone on in the world and fix it and make it perfect and beautiful and amazing again if we will just put our faith in him it says we will not come into condemnation this is saying that we're not going to come into judgment because once we accept jesus christ as our savior we have been judged and condemned but that condemnation has been put on Jesus. Where God takes on what we deserve and he gives us what he deserves. This is the good news. I hope you accept it today. Thanks for watching and take care.